Hey guys, Curious Hobbyist here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be modifying a game named Poppy Chocolate by Sunflat Games, which is from the Mac App Store. So let's begin by opening and playing the game. First, we can see that it's made with a game engine called Unity. The premise of this game is to move this red ball character called Poppy with the arrow keys to coat him in chocolate, which is kind of an oddball idea to me. And you have 30 seconds to coat him as much as you can. At the end, you can see some high scores, otherwise known as recent results of everyone. So all in all, it's a pretty simple game. So now, let's modify it. If you haven't seen my first video on how to modify Mac apps, I'll show you how to do it briefly here. First, go to your Applications folder and find the app you want to modify, and then right-click on it and select Show Package Contents. By the way, if right-clicking isn't an option for you, you can enable it by opening your System Preferences and go to the Mouse section. Then check the Secondary Click box. From there, you can choose whether you want secondary clicking assigned to your left or right mouse input. Now as you probably guessed, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to go with right. You can also adjust the tracking speed, which is how fast your cursor moves relative to how far you move the mouse. Another possibility is that your mouse only has one input and doesn't support secondary clicking. So another option is to click while holding down the control key on your keyboard. That way, it's as if you're right-clicking. Right-clicking on folders, files, dark shortcuts, and more brings up a small window with more advanced options such as creating folders, copying and compressing files, and removing and adding dock shortcuts, telling them to open when you log in, and going to their location on your computer. There's a lot you can do with the secondary click feature. Okay, back to the app. First, let's look in the resources folder. First, there's this logo image for PhysX by NVIDIA. There's also resources from that Unity game engine. Also, in this data folder, there are level files, shared assets files, and other resources. Hold on. I think I remember seeing this in Stop Mania when I modified that. First, let's look in the Resources folder. Firstly, we can see this logo. Last, but certainly not least, let's check out what's in this data folder. At first, So these resources are pretty similar, and look like they're from Unity as well. So I think it's safe to say that Stop Mania was also made with Unity. So first, let's swap the names of level 0 and 1 like I tried with Stop Mania. Each time I renamed or modified one of these files, a window popped up asking for an administrator's name and password. If this is your computer, you likely own full rights to it and have the password. But if you're a standard or guest user, you may need to ask for it. That can get very time consuming, especially if you're trying to make more frequent modifications. But you can also give permission to modify the entire app. Here's how. Right click on the contents folder and select Get Info. A window will pop up with the contents folder info. Now click the lock to enter your admin password and make changes. Now click on the drop down next to everyone and then select the read and write option. Click the gear drop down and select apply to enclosed items. Then click OK at the top. This will actually apply the permission settings. So now that I've swapped levels 0 and 1, let's play the game. Instead of going to the title screen, the main game starts immediately because it was level 1 and I swapped its name for level 0. If you go to the title screen, the main game starts again because it's level 0 now. If you retry, it takes you back to the title screen, which is level 1 now. If you select play here, it tries to load the main game, but because what I did swapped it with the title screen, it just keeps restarting the title screen. What's interesting about this is that the file it usually opens is swapped, so it's different. But the file name that these level files are programmed to recognize and open remains the same. So switching their names around in different ways will produce different results. So let's swap levels 0 and 1 back, and then swap levels 1 and 2. And now let's start it again. The title screen works normally, but when I clicked play, the retry screen loaded. The shot from when you were playing the main game, the records, and the high scores aren't there. Of course, retrying load level 1, which I swapped the retry screen with, which means that retrying restarts the retry screen. You can go back to the title, but clicking play again leads to the same place, which basically makes the game unplayable because you can't get to the main game, which I swapped with level 2. Another thing I wanted to try is transferring files between Startmania. 
First, I'll try opening level 0, which is a loading screen from Stunt Mania with Poppy Chocolate. To open a file with a specific application, right click on it and choose Other under Open Width. If you need to, select all applications from this drop down. This will allow you to choose any application instead of highlighting only specific ones, even if it's not known that it can open the file you selected. This can be useful in certain situations, but here it wouldn't open because it was a Unix executable file. But these are levels, not executables, so maybe they would work if I transferred them. But first, I need to back up these data folders. First, I'm going to try adding the level 0 file from Stuntmania into Poppy Chocolate. Because the loading screen is a pretty simple level, it seems like it's the most likely to work. If it does, theoretically level 1 will launch. Well, it doesn't work because Poppy Chocolate quit unexpectedly. So next, I tried swapping level 3 from Stunt Mania with level 1 from Poppy Chocolate. When I started the game, I played the island level because that's level 3. Then the loading icon on the loading screen became very opaque very quickly. I remember this happening in my previous video, but not that quickly. Let's move on to the next experiment. What I'm doing is I'm duplicating level 0, dragging level 1 out of the data folder and then renaming the copy to level 1. Because level 1 is technically level 0, level 0 starts on top of the existing level 0 when level 1 is launched. The game then keeps trying to launch level 1, but the selection screen does not start. The effect? Well, it's pretty audible. After a minute, you can also notice the visible effect as well. And then I did another recording. Look at this bolting, weird looking loading circle. I listened to that mad cacophony. So here, multiple instances of level 0 start farther apart in time. This might be because the levels seem to start faster than the selection screen does. Also, if this had the same audio effect, that would have been really, really loud. So now, let's try the same thing with the selection screen. As you can see, the same thing happens here. So I think it's the error from the poppy level that causes instances of the loading screen to start incredibly fast. Because even starting a level isn't as fast. So as you can see, these levels are not compatible. This might be because the other resources in the two games are different. If they were compatible though, I would have been able to create a poppy chocolate stop mania bundle just by configuring the file names. It would be missing some levels of course, but how cool would that be? So next, I want to quickly update you guys on Super Fancy Pants Adventure again, because I found where the game progress is. To get to it, go to your menu bar, click the Go dropdown, and select Go to Folder. Alternatively, use Shift Command G. Now type in slash users, slash the name of your home folder, slash library. By the way, none of this is case sensitive, but it's important for there to be a slash at the beginning. Now, go to Application Support, and then the game progress is in a folder called com.borngames.fpaworld4. Inside, there's this air version folder, but there's only one file inside, so I'm guessing this is a framework of some sort. There's also this local store folder, and inside of it, there are two SOL files. What is an SOL file? An SOL file contains settings and user data that's saved for the Adobe Flash Player. The SOL format is only used by Flash versions 6 and later. SOL files are very similar to cookies created by many different websites. So essentially, these are cookies. This I think looks more like my game progress. So I'll try moving this local store folder and then start the game. And as expected, this is the first intro cutscene. It only occurs when you have no game progress. Also, if I make this window shorter, we can see the boundaries of this glass-like texture that's temporarily there to make the room around you look like it's nighttime, and only for the intro. Interesting. I 
I also did the same thing at this cutscene where you look out this window. That also creates some interesting effects. So by removing the local store folder, you can reset your progress. You could also restore it later, or even create a makeshift multi-profile interface by creating new folders with usernames on them, and dragging the location to your finder sidebar or the dock. So every time a user plays the game, they drag the current local store folder into the empty folder and drag out the one from the folder with their name on it. But one, it isn't as easy to use. Two, how is anyone supposed to figure that out? The way I became a curious hobbyist, that's how. But I'm sure a multi-profile interface would be possible, because there are Flash games that have one, such as this game called Flight. Pretty good game by the way, so I'll link it below. Also, this game is a larger project, so I think game progress should be better, not worse, than the three FBA Flash games. I should also mention that Poppy Chocolate opens in full screen by default, but once I minimized it, I found that no matter what size you change the window to, the aspect ratio of the game remains the same. You can also minimize it and make it very small. So I decided to show you what that looks like up close. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, feel free to like it, share with family and friends, and subscribe for more interesting content. If you want to be notified when I upload a new video, click the bell that appears after you subscribe. Also, check out my channel by clicking here. I have more videos I think you would find interesting to check out. If you have questions or requests, you can let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.